To give you the background on a dweller on two planets, it was dictated by Philos the Tibetan to his amanuensis, Frederick S. Oliver. The word amanuensis means secretary. The book was begun in 1883 or 4, when Frederick Oliver was 17 or 18 years old. It was completed in 1886 and published in 1899. The subject is the story of Philos' life in his embodiment as Zalem Numinous on the ancient continent of Atlantis, the greatest nation on earth at that time. The book also covers Philo's embodiment in the 19th century as an American by the name of Walter Pearson. It shows how he reaped the karma he had made 12,000 years before on Atlantis. I am specifically teaching the book, A Dweller on Two Planets by Philo's, because it gives to us an understanding of karma as well as grace. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which gives us the opportunity to live and serve again to balance karma. In the Old Testament, we had a dispensation of the law, and very few individuals in that period of history retained the fusion to the Holy Christ self. Therefore, they did not have the mediator, and Jesus Christ had not come as the Son of God to fulfill the promise of God to draw all men back to him through that son. So the Old Testament under the law of Moses gives us the example of the harshness of the law descending. Moses himself would act as mediator before the people. And when God said he would punish them and he would bring great calamities to come upon them, Moses would reason with him and urge him to mitigate his wrath against his people. So sometimes Moses was successful, and sometimes he was not. With the coming of Jesus Christ, the mediator is in embodiment through Jesus. He came for the specific purpose to reignite the threefold flame and to make of us sons of God, to, ever, to whoever would believe on his name and receive him. We have that same opportunity today. In the last 2,000 years, because of the dispensation of Jesus Christ, there has been a tremendous opportunity for souls to reestablish their fusion with the Holy Christ self through Jesus and ultimately with Jesus. The reigniting of the threefold flame is a part of that process for those who have lost that flame. The pendulum of Orthodox Christianity has swung to a far position of saying that only grace is necessary. And the Lutheran position is that Jesus did it all on the cross. In the few hours he was on that cross, he atoned for all the sins of the world, past, present, and future. Therefore, all that anyone has to do is to call upon the name of Jesus Christ, accept him as Savior, and they will go to heaven. Now, there is no conditioning in the mind of Martin Luther or Lutherans today. So sins that are done thereafter may be, may be forgiven and are not consequential in this salvation exclusively by grace. Other Christians believe that grace is a part of it, that faith is necessary, of course, as Lutherans do, but they also say that faith without works is dead. And that statement by the Apostle James was rejected by Martin Luther. So what we find is that no matter what the gradations of belief, the basic Orthodox Christian tenet today is that you do not have to balance your karma because Jesus paid the price. My feeling about the book of Philos is that it makes quite clear that that grace is present and that we are bound to follow the teachings of the Old and New Testament and to know that grace and to know that union with God through the heart of Jesus Christ, but that that does not exempt us from our karma. Our karma must be paid. And what this book shows is that 
Most often, as we find also in Hindu teachings, the cycles of returning karma do not return in the same life as that karma is made. This often explains to us why so much injustice goes uncorrected and the evildoer may continue in his evil ways for a lifetime and to all appearances will not be stopped in any measure. This is a puzzlement to us, except when we understand the law of reincarnation along with karma. Reincarnation says that these cycles come full circle in their time as the fruit that ripens on the tree. And when that karma is ripe, then we are there to reap it. And therefore, we never know from day to day why we are reaping calamities or situations. We don't seem to necessarily connect them with any recent right or wrong that we may have done. This is because of the wide orb of the cycles returning. <laughs>